Thank you, Madam Speaker. Honourable Senators, I rise today to respond to the speech from the throne, which focused on strengthening Canada's economy and building a more resilient and inclusive future. At the heart of this resilience lies our health care system, and today Canada is facing a health care crisis that is deeply intertwined with the well-being of our economy and our society. Today's Canadian Institute for Health Information reports that over 5 million Canadians do not have access to a family doctor. And this number is projected to reach 10 million in the next decade. Consider this situation. An individual with high blood pressure or diabetes needs their routine prescription renewed. But without a family doctor or primary care provider, they end up in an emergency room. After waiting for hours, and I have evidence that in some instances this may be as long as 16 hours, they finally see a doctor who renews their prescription. The irony, that emergency room visit, which could have easily been avoided, costs the healthcare system hundreds of dollars and adds considerable stress and a wasted day for the for the individual concerned. This is the reality when millions of Canadians do not have access to primary care. Routine, non-urgent issues overwhelm our emergency rooms, making the system more expensive and less efficient for all concerned. This shortage is just not a health care issue, it is an economic one. A healthy population is essential for a thriving economy, Canadians need timely access to primary care to reduce the strain on emergency rooms, keep people healthy, and ensure that they can fully contribute to society. As a family physician, I've witnessed firsthand the critical role that primary care plays in the health and well-being of Canadians. Yet, we are at a crossroads. We currently rank in the basement of the high-income countries with respect to access to primary care. This is really unacceptable for a country as prosperous and resourceful as ours. At the same time, thousands of highly trained immigrant doctors and Canadians studying abroad in jurisdictions like Ireland, Australia and the Caribbean, eager to contribute to our healthcare system, are being handicapped and held back by systemic barriers such as the limited number of residency training positions and insufficient practice-ready assessment programs. These barriers prevent our healthcare system from trapping into a much-needed talent and waste the potential of these physicians who bring with them a wealth of clinical experience and, in some instances, global expertise that would be particularly valuable to our immigrant population. My hope is that despite government's recent changes in immigration, that a commitment to immigration of highly skilled individuals will continue in this country. Alongside my colleagues, Senators Ahmedva and Senator Kucha, after much debate, we released a report entitled Maximizing Medical Talent, How Canada Can Increase the Supply of Family Doctors by 50% quickly and cost-effectively. It offers actionable solutions that align with the government's broader vision of an inclusive and resilient economy. The report presents two key recommendations to address the shortage by unlocking the potential of physicians from immigrant backgrounds and those who've studied abroad. First, we must increase the number of residency positions by funding 750 additional family medicine residency spots annually. This would add 6,000 new family doctors over the next decade, doctors who are ready, willing, and able to provide care to Canadians, especially those in underserved communities. Second, we must expand PRA, or Practice Ready Assessment Programs, which allow internationally trained doctors to demonstrate their competence and practice in Canada without the need for years of additional training. With a relatively modest federal investment of $70 million, we could add at least 1,000 additional family doctors annually through this program. 
Addressing the family doctor shortage will reduce health care co costs, improve the quality of life for Canadians, and bolster our economy by ensuring a healthy, productive population. Moreover, these measures align with the government's emphasis on inclusivity by unlocking the potential of immigrant professionals who have long been sidelined. In this context, I do want to acknowledge the federal government's historic $200 billion investment in health care over the next 10 years. This investment is a vital step forward in addressing critical health care challenges, including the health care workforce crisis. It includes $46.2 billion in new funding, with a substantial portion aimed at health care workforce planning and retention, a key component to the family doctor shortage. Additionally, $25 billion will be distributed through bilateral agreements with provinces and territories, ensuring that local health care needs, but particularly for our rural, remote and indigenous, indigenous populations, are appropriately addressed. This investment prioritizes increasing access to primary care services, reducing wait times, supporting mental health initiatives, all of which are essential in building a resilient health care system. However, to take this challenge head on, we must act swiftly and strategically to ensure that talented healthcare professionals can fully participate in our healthcare system. This means leveraging the government's investment to expand residency spots, grow the PRA programs, and ensure that every community, especially those in underserved areas, benefit from a robust primary care network. I believe that we are at a pivotal moment in Canadian health care. The family doctor shortage is growing more urgent by the day, especially in rural and remote communities, where access to care is most limited. With the solutions outlined in our plan, coupled with the federal government's investment in health care, we hope that we can make an immediate and profound impact. This is more than just about health care policy. It's about ensuring that all communities have access to care. By removing barriers for these physicians, we not only strengthen our health care system, but also enhance our economy and the well-being of society as a whole. Together, we can build a health care system that reflects our Canadian values of inclusivity, resilience, and opportunity, a system that meets the needs of all Canadians. Please be assured, in the meanwhile, colleagues, that I'm happy to continue providing prescrip prescriptions to my respected colleagues. Thank you. Merci. Miigwech.